This man spends most of his life working inside the deepest mine in Sri Lanka. He's after a mineral that is now at the center of the global tech war, graphite. It's the largest component of batteries that power electric vehicles. And Sri Lanka has the purest graphite in the world. But today, China produces nearly 70% of the global supply. And in a controversial move, it recently restricted exports of the critical mineral to mega buyers like the US. So can smaller players like Sri Lanka step up to meet the world's growing demand? We went inside the biggest graphite mine in the country to find out. Lush rainforests surround the small village of Nithulpitiya, where Neil Suresh Abesikara grew up. The soil here is fertile, and many people grow their own vegetables. But the main source of income is graphite mining. One of the country's oldest graphite mines, Kahatagaha, is about a mile away. This elevator is what Neil places his trust in when he goes 2,000 feet underground. There are about 12 levels in the mine. It takes Neil about 15 minutes to get to the base. Down here, it's almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The Kahatagaha graphite mine is owned by the Sri Lankan government. It produces nearly 800 tons a year. The only way to extract the deposits is to blast the metamorphic rocks with dynamite. Sunil so and his colleague Guruj Deshapriya have to set up this firing wire and dynamite. They secure the ends with old papers. Then, Neil uses a drill to inject fluid into the walls which helps stabilize them. They feed in the wires and dynamite and cushion them. It's important to fully seal the hole so the explosion can create an impact through the wall. They light the dynamite and move almost a thousand feet away. Then the men collect the graphite in these carts and move it out through the elevator. But if there's a power cut, things can get dire. But there's so much more in these walls that miners can't access. Because their techniques and tools are nearly 150 years old like this small cart, which can carry two workers at a time deeper into the mine. Mm -hmm. 
Graphite mining in Sri Lanka can be traced all the way back to the 17th century. Its first documented use was for pencils. But by the early 20th century, British colonizers were mainly using it to make bombshells and cannonballs. Back then, there were nearly 3,000 graphite pits in the country. But demand for Sri Lanka's graphite dropped when World War II ended. Then, in 1971, the government nationalized the sector, and that led to even more neglect. Meanwhile, China started pouring resources into mining, leaving Sri Lanka in the dust. Today, there are three major graphite mines in Sri Lanka, including Kahatakaha, where much of the local processing is done by hand. Women sort and cut the graphite at small workshops. The purest kind has higher levels of carbon, as much as 95%. And the women can identify it by simply looking at the texture, shine, and hardness. Currently, Sri Lanka produces about 3,000 tons of graphite a year, while China churns out nearly 850,000 tons a year. Graphite's main use these days is in lithium-ion batteries found in smartphones and laptops. And it makes up the largest part of any electric vehicle. EV batteries have a positive side and negative side, and, and graphite is that negative side. The mineral is highly conductive, resistant to heat, and can store energy for a long time, making it ideal for EV batteries. That industry is expected to triple from $56 billion this year to $187 billion by 2032. When you're looking at millions of vehicles being produced every year, you're going to need quite a lot of graphite to do that. To keep up with demand, China is also making synthetic or artificial graphite. Manufacturing it is more expensive and harmful to the environment. Now, China is controlling who can buy this critical mineral. The government recently started requiring companies that export it to apply for a license first. And that would allow them to block some foreign buyers from countries like Japan, South Korea and the US, which gets a third of its graphite from China. Experts say it's a power play as the two countries compete for dominance. China could use this to pressure the US on an array of political issues, from the control of Taiwan to the South China Sea. So now the US is looking into other sources. And that could be Sri Lanka's chance to step up. Companies like Ceylon Graphite are testing the material for lithium-ion batteries and have seen positive results. It's absolutely a huge opportunity for Sri Lanka uh, to take this material, this, this unique natural advantage that the country has. But graphite from Kahatagaha is mostly used to make steel and lubricants. Neil says at one point, a thousand people worked here. Today, it's less than 60. One reason is that wages are low. Miners make just 30,000 rupees a month, or nearly $100. Neil wouldn't tell us his salary. But when he clocks up from mining, another job awaits him. He also sells vegetables that he grows in his garden. While his wife prepares a traditional meal with vegetables, he helps the kids with their homework. He only finished high school, but he has bigger plans for his sons. The oldest is learning Korean and wants to study abroad. Neil hopes he can make it happen so that graphite mining is not the only option for yet another generation.